I've been wanting to do a portrait of my husband for quite some time, and I had a couple of pictures that I was thinking of. We had gone out for the day and had a really fun time, and so I had lots of great memories of the occasion, and I really wanted to do the portrait from those pictures. So I started out with two different images that I really liked. But I liked the face on the right hand side and the body language and the hands on the left hand picture. So in the end, I ended up using a composite image of both. I then changed my reference image to black and white and made sure that I pushed my contrast in order to create a complete range of values, making sure that I had nice, rich, dark blacks in my shadow areas. Before I begin applying the charcoal, I create a simple graphic preliminary drawing in pencil on my paper. Once I'm happy that everything is accurate, I go back over the drawing using a carbon pencil so that I can create a foundational drawing that won't disappear under the charcoal as I'm working on it. Using a charcoal pounce, I then go in and start loosely establishing my lights and my darks and creating a kind of loose painterly sort of atmospheric feel to the drawing before I start the drawing itself. As I move forward with the drawing, I'm using a combination of different charcoal mediums. I'm using General's charcoal pencils, I'm also using Neatrum charcoal sticks, vine charcoal sticks, as well as loose charcoal powder to be used with a brush or a pounce. I'm also using white creticolored leads to be used as highlights. You'll also see my wall stick in order to keep my hand raised above my work so it doesn't smudge. And also I'm using a series of pencil extenders for the, both the pencils and the charcoal in order to give a light touch and a smooth, even flow to my work. For my blending tools, I'm using a series of brushes as well as rags and my pounce. I quickly establish my darks around the face and the shapes of the hat and the background, I want to keep them very loose and very sort of atmospheric. I don't want to get into any kind of detail with that area and leave that mostly for the focus of the face. I'm also picking up my highlights with my kneaded eraser. I continue to build my darks on the left side of the face, filling in my shadow shapes and blending the edges. I want to keep that side of the face very sort of dark and mysterious, so I want to be careful to build a kind of character and atmosphere that goes around it and not creating too much detail, focusing more on building my values and blending. I continue to work my details in my face, working from the top down so I'm not smudging any of my charcoal. And I'm just using my kneaded eraser, my pencil, and my brushes to blend and build my values and details to the level that I want. I love working in charcoal. It's such a rich and expressive medium. It's also a very fast medium. You can produce an image in just a few hours. And this process of building a realistic image is really about having accurate shapes, building your values layer upon layer, and then blending your edges. As I move towards the mouth, I have to go back in and correct a few of my shapes before I continue. I'm careful to work with a very, very sharp pencil and work with a very light touch. And it's this combination of a play of opposites that you see throughout the image. We have the dark darks, the light lights, but we have also this loose painterly sort of strokes and feel in the background combined with details that are throughout the face. And it's this combination that creates a kind of dynamic pull back and forth. And that's what makes for an interesting image.
as I move to the bottom of the face, it's really a delicate dance now at this point as to how much detail and how much I push my values in order to say what I want to say, but at the same time not detract from the character of the face. So I'm constantly moving back and forth, looking at the entirety of the face and thinking how far do I want to push these things, how much do I want to say, and how much detail do I want to put in to attract the eye. And so it's really about balancing the whole and then making aesthetic choices rather than slavishly copying your reference material. Because a portrait is so much more than just copying the physical likeness of someone, it's really about capturing who that person really is. As I move to the hands, I start the process all over again by doing a light drawing with a carbon pencil in order to establish a base drawing before I put any charcoal on top. But this time, when I'm doing the hands, it has a different uh, role to play in the portrait. The hands are not the main event. They are just there as sort of the chorus line in the background. And so I have to make a decision how much I'm going to put in. And as I move through the rest of the drawing, you'll notice that I didn't even address the shirt that he was wearing. This is a process of basically editing out information. You have to make aesthetic choices as to what stays and what goes, what you want to be the focus of your portrait and what is really not important in the overall message or sort of feel that you want to create. For me, his clothing is irrelevant. What I wanted was the face and the hands and that's where I'm going to put my focus. But even then, the hands really can't detract from the face. So I'm going to be working with them very, very lightly and there's going to be a lot of information that's going to be left out. I also happen to really like his hands. To me, they're very strong and at the same time very sensitive and for me, they represent a large part of his character. He's a terrific woodworker and has built lots of beautiful things for our home as an expression of love and so for me, including the hands was a really important part of expressing his character and who he is. So at this point in the hands, I'm going through the same thing I went through with the face, trying to decide how much stays and how much goes, what kind of information is important and which kind of information actually detracts from the whole. So I noticed that in order to make the hands convincing and realistic, I have to have a certain amount of information, but I don't want it to be too dark or too detailed. So I notice I'm putting it in and then I'm pulling it back. I'm either rubbing it off with my rag or my brushes, or I'm pouncing it to make it sort of more sort of, you know, subtle and pulled back. And really it's at this point, I'm just trying to decide how much is enough in order to say what I need to say with the hands. And in the end, I end up leaving off quite a bit of information particularly with the bottom fingers because they seem to create too much of a distraction and I want them simply to just fade off and create more of a vignette effect. So a few finishing touches to make sure that I'm happy with my values and my edges and just smooth everything over so that it blends very well. So I'll get my husband to make a beautiful frame for it and we'll hang it in our living room and our kids can fight over who gets it after we're gone.
Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this demo. And if you would like to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, share, or subscribe, and hit the notification button so you'll know when they're posted. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.